Kieran Gibbons for seconds out here in the Moat Point Arena in Cardiff. Um, speaking to you now, trainer Shane McGuigan. Uh, Shane, how do you assess your fight there, Caroline Dubois performance tonight? Yeah, very good. I mean, you know, it's a pro debut. She has just turned 21. Uh, and there's a lot of hype about her, you know, but that, that puts a lot of pressure on herself. Um, and definitely there was a lot of nerves going into that. But everyone's going to have nerves on pro debut. Not many people have their pro debut this close to the main event, Sky Sports, with all this expectation coming out to Sweet Caroline. So the fact that she, after the first, second round, she starts settling down. She dropped in the third, but you know, she, did, she was just a little bit wider of the punches and she can perform way better than that. She said to me afterwards, oh, I didn't feel like a box well at all. But I just said, that's, that's, that's normal, you yeah, know, because you're putting such high standards for yourself. But she still dealt with a great one every round. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the start of a great journey. Is it just trying to find the, the balance and act between getting it on shows but not putting too much pressure on because of the name that, and her reputation? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you look at her brother, knocks everybody out, and obviously there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of hype. But Caroline's a fantastic boxer. She's got fantastic skills, won everything as a youth, went to Olympics at 20. Amazing talent. Um, she just needs to settle down a little bit. But it's just, this is the, this is the way female boxing is. It, it's all, everyone wants to fight for world titles in three, four fights. It's like, calm down, take your time, ease into it. You know, it's, it's more the, it's not, it's not the opposition. It's the, it's the occasion. You know what I mean? You have to learn to deal with the occasion and this completely new environment, small gloves on, horsehair gloves, uh, no vest, no head guard. So all of these things, they're, they're all different variables that can play a massive factor, but she boxed great. You know, I think she boxed great. She just lunged in a little bit too much and it's just on to the next one. But you know, I'm looking after her managerially as well. So just gonna, we're going to match her right, take her time, get her really active, get her used to these occasions. In six to eight months' time, she'll be. This will be just a walk in the park for her. But in the changes, you know, she was. You can see the nerves, you know, and it, and it's a good thing because, as you know, as we said, you only get one debut, but you have to learn to enjoy it as well a little bit. Is there an issue in women's boxing where you got like obviously like um, pro debuts for ex Olympians like this, and then there's a bit of a gap between the, there's no real British level if you like, and then it goes almost straight to world level. Yeah, it's just it's it's either you know like. Ju you know, like going in there against opponents that are there to, to get beaten, or you're going in there with stiff competition, you know, someone that's going to try and win, that's either a world champion or there or thereabouts. So um, there is a massive gap. So that's why we have to have, you know, five, six of these bouts, get used to it, and then we'll sort of push on. Also, we're going to try and find her, find her weight division as well, because, you know, she boxed at 60 kilos, but she was 20. So whether we go to, Lightweight or, or light welter, or you know, super lightweight, as it called in, in now. Um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see, but the body's still growing. We'll let her develop. You know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll take it as it. You know, take it fight by fight. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's it's you know, she's got bundles of talent. And uh, how do you keep her feet on the ground? Because no doubt she probably. Given the choice, we're jumping for a world title fight tomorrow if she could. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's because she can. You know, she's sparring Hannah Rankin. You know, her last three or four spars with Hannah Rankin. So um, that's uh, yeah, who's a, who's a world champion at light middleweight. So when you're mixing it in the gym, and you've got Ellie Scottney in the gym as well, who's going to be fighting for a title next next Saturday. So there's a uh, you're, you're you're sparring with people that are fighting for titles. It's it's easy to think I'm there already, but she, you know, ability wise, she is already there. It's it's more experience wise. You know, it takes time to build experience. And uh, and that's the beauty of the fact that she's so young. She can just she can take it, you know, take it slow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the heavyweight situation at the moment: Joshua Fury, Usyk, and um, Dillian White. What's your take on the whole thing? Um, not not a lot, really. I mean, I think it's you know, I, I was surprised that it went to purse bids, and uh, Fury decided to to to, uh, to opt for the white fight. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, don't, I, I think it's a very, it's a very marquee fight. Him versus Dylan White is a fantastic, fantastic fight. Strange that Dylan White has gone a bit quiet, but um, that's a fight I'd really be excited as a fan to watch. You know, uh, White versus Fury. And uh, what does Dylan White have to do? He's widely regarded as the underdog going into the fight. I mean, what was he going to do to try and beat Tyson Fury? Push him back and try and, you know, listen, he's not going to outbox him, is he? He's going to have to try and stick it on him. I don't think he's got, capable of doing so. I do think he's capable of giving him a hard fight, though, and that's why it makes it exciting. And it's a heavyweight division. It only takes one shot. 
from from each of them, obviously, um, not just uh, from from Tyson Fury. It's um, you know the, like Tyson Fury's been on it. He's been down in in his last fight a couple of times, and you know obviously Dylan White's not as big of a puncher as Deontay Wilder, but he's still a very big puncher. So it's. Um, He'll have to be aggressive. He'll have to try and work the body, but it's a it's a hard ask. And uh, what does Anthony Joshua have to do to get the win in the rematch with Usyk, providing it happens? Obviously, he's to be a little bit more aggressive. He can't be too reckless and just rush in. You know, he's got to be a little bit more aggressive. He has to work the body. Uh, me watching it, I, the, the shot I would be looking for is just firing that right hook into the body, trying to step round him and firing it in, and and just dictating the centre. Yeah, you know, being aggressive, but also either dropping back. And then sometimes meeting him, um, but that you know, for, for for AJ, he needs to really go and assess his setup, which he's. I know he's doing it already, but once again, it's a big ask to go into the rematch that you've just lost. Uh, you know, same same opponent with the new team. It, it takes time to build confidence in your team and your confidence back in yourself. So, but I know he's a, you know, he's a he's a very determined guy, uh, and he's a you know he is a winner, so he's got that in him. Um, and if he chooses to fight that rematch, yeah, you know, he's still, you know, he's still got a fantastic chance. I, I believe he I gets the right, the right tactics. He should win the fight. Do you think Usyk's got another few gears to go through as well? I mean, we, we all talk about what Joshua is going to do differently this time. Um, presumably, Usyk's going to know the tactics Joshua is going to use or is likely to use. Look, I think I, I think Usyk's a more uh, an instinctive fighter. You got Tyson Fury; he's an instinctive fighter. You know, he can work on a game plan and change it up. I think Usyk's a bit more like that. So someone like AJ has to be drilled. You know, you have to drill him, work him really hard, um, and, and try and disconnect that that respect factor for him um, for his opponents. You know, you have to you have to change it up. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Usyk will be able to adapt. I think if Usyk got a little bit more aggressive, which he might tend to do, because he you know he hurt he hurt AJ in the last round a little bit, he might think he could stamp his authority a bit more. But at the same time, he'll be lingering in the pocket a bit longer. And potentially get nailed at the same time, so that's what makes it exciting. Um, but you know, as, as I said, you know, it, it, I think all those fights are a long way off from being made. Um, and you know, once it could completely change up this heavyweight box, and he's got you know, AJ could go back to taking the step aside, Fury could pull out, fight Usyk. We never know. It's all speculation until it gets signed. Okay, yeah, thank you, Shane, and uh, good luck for the future, mate.